The drug ecstasy is often associated with raves, electronic dance music, hippies, and other things of this nature. But before being classified as a Schedule 1 drug, ecstasy was used to help patients during therapy sessions. Today, studies are being done to once again test its effectiveness in a therapeutic setting. And if the results are to be trusted, ecstasy might just be the breakthrough drug many patients of disorders like PTSD have been looking for all along. There's only one minor hangup. Ecstasy is a Schedule 1 drug in the United States. So why is the drug illegal in the first place, and what have scientists found about its medicinal value? Known in the medical world as MDMA, ecstasy was developed by a German pharmaceutical company in 1912. While it was used for emotional therapy prior to being banned in the United States, ecstasy originally was developed simply to help synthesize medications used to control bleeding. But, by the 1970s, ecstasy started seeing use in psychiatry circles. Despite not having passed formal trials and not having the approval of the US Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, psychiatrists found that this drug helped their patients gain insights about their issues. Around the 1980s, it also became more widely known that the drug could provide a feeling of, well, ecstasy. It was this euphoric feeling that gave MDMA its more common name that we've come to know. It didn't take long for the US government to recognize the growing use of the drug. In 1985, the US Drug Enforcement Agency, or DEA, acted swiftly and placed MDMA on the list of Schedule 1 drugs. This means that in the eyes of the United States government, MDMA has no accepted medical use and has a high potential for being abused. Ecstasy has remained on the list of Schedule 1 drugs since 1985. Well, if you ignore a period of less than one year between 1987 and 1988, that is. Since the 1990s, there have been ongoing FDA-approved human trials involving MDMA's effectiveness at treating pain and as a supplement to psychotherapy. And given the drug's Schedule 1 listing, the results of many of these tests may come as a surprise. Ali Fedachia is a scientist at the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, or MAPS, who authored a research paper in the journal Psychopharmacology that analyzed the outcomes of clinical MDMA trials. The analysis covered data from six Phase II trials that were conducted from 2004 to 2017. 103 patients were included in the trials, and the participants were a mix of civilians, first responders, and veterans. After a few therapy sessions used to develop a connection between the patient and the therapist, patients were randomly assigned either a medical dose of MDMA or a placebo over the course of a few 8-hour psychotherapy sessions. During the sessions, the patients would be guided through periods of introspection as well as have periods of direct communication with the therapist. This was done to allow the patients to safely and comfortably revisit the source of their trauma in an attempt to help identify solutions. After the sessions, the patients would stay overnight and have a follow-up therapy session. Researchers found the drug to not only be safe, but also pretty effective. Nearly 50% of participants who received MDMA no longer met their criteria to be diagnosed with PTSD after just two sessions. This effectiveness rate is over double that of the placebo trials, where only 23% of participants no longer met PTSD diagnostic criteria. Even in the cases of those who were still able to be diagnosed with PTSD after treatment, the severity of the PTSD symptoms were reduced and stayed that way for nearly a year. Researchers did report that while the drug was safe and well tolerated by patients, those who received MDMA were more likely to report side effects like dizziness, nausea, a loss of appetite, and anxiety. MAPS is now looking to begin Phase 3 clinical trials. Success in Phase 3 trials is needed to get FDA approval for MDMA-based PTSD treatments. For decades, many psychedelic drugs have been blacklisted from medical research. Now, we may be entering a new era of psychiatric research and medicine.